good morning students good morning to all and last day we have studied about the recent advancement in the banking sector so what are the recent advancement in the banking sectors mean first one is is the electronic bank next one is paytm and the debit card after the credit card and some of the advancement was there so today also we will just study what we have studied on last day and we will go to the next topics and today also we will go to the next concept and within today this lessons will be get over so today we will study about the recent issues in the banking sectors so what are the recent issues in this banking is non performing assets non performing assets so once the borrower fails to make interest on principal payments for 90 days the loan is considered to be a non performing assets so once the borrower fails to make the interest or principal payments for 90 days the loan is considered to be a non performing assets so the non performing assets are problematic for financial institutions since they depend on interest payments for income so normally all the banks all the commercial banks will be have the income mostly depending on their rate of interest or the interest are paying the loan amount if they are not able to providing the payment to the bank or if they are maintaining the non performing assets so the banking will get failure as estimated to be around 10 lakhs crores the non payment non performing assets are there so already more than a sum of 2 lakhs crores have been injected suppose if the banking sectors get failure like that the government only have to take the effort to providing the claim of the losses so this is the reason the issues in the bank next merger of banks so nowadays or not in nowadays the reserve bank of india have been decided to merge all the remaining five associates bank in 2000 17 so mostly all the scheduled bank and all the branch of the state bank not the state bank groups so the state bank of mysore state bank of patiala state bank of trivangur and the state bank of jaipur so all type of the state banks are joining together merged together and it was begin as a state bank groups next money market so this is also one of the important concept in our in this lessons so money market is the mechanism through which short term funds loaned or borrowed so it designates financial institutions which handle the purchase sale and transfer of short term credit instruments the commercial banks acceptance houses non banking financial institutions and the central bank are the institutions catering to the requirements of short term funds in the money market next is the capital market so the capital market is the financial part of the financial system which is concerned with the raising capital by dealing in shares bonds and other long term investments if any of the banks or any of the financial institutions want to gathering the funds by dealing in shares bonds and other long term investment if they need a long term investment they will be approach the capital markets next demonetization i think you may know about the demonetization because now the demonetization the problematic of the demonetization may be affected all the peoples throughout the world so the demonetization is the act of stripping a currency unit of its status as a legal tender normally if you have some amount of the money 
which has the value so the demonetization is the act of stripping a currency unit of its status as a legal tender so it occurs whenever there is a change of national currencies so normally it will never happen often and again and again if a nations if a government want to stop the corruptions and the effectively monetary policies the demonetization act will be happens so the current form or forms of money is pulled from the circulations so often to be replaced with the new coins or notes on 18th november 2016 the indian prime minister mr narendra modi announced the demonetization of all 500 and 100 rupees bank notes so however more than 99 percentage of those currencies came back to the reserve bank of india so before the 2016 we have the we have used or some of the 500 and 1000 rupees note was in circulation but by the purpose of stopping the corruptions and stopping the terror funds and removing the black money so the prime minister modi was introduced that demonetization after that because of that the 500 rupees notes and the 1000 rupees notes was stopped in the circulated so all the money all the denominations currency was went to the reserve bank itself next objectives of demonetization so what are the objectives are there in this demonetization act first one is removing black money from the country how the demonetization act will be removing the black money from the country means so many of the people who have the money or will hold their money in unnecessarily now if the already the currency which has already existing in the circulated if it is stopped the black money also will be removed because we must exchange we must use the money or new introduced money only so when we are removing the existing currency it will never come to circulate next is stopping of corruptions so this is also in the same way only so by the way of demonetization so the corruption will come to stop if you want to corrupt we have to provide the new currencies but in the beginning time no one will get more new currency currencies how much amount of old currencies we have in our hand itself we must exchange it for the new currencies so beyond one level of beyond to the one level so if we have more currencies we have to pay tax otherwise we will never exchange the new currencies instead of old existing currency next is stopping terror funds normally that funds always will be used by the terrorists in the old currencies only by introducing the new currencies they will never use the old currencies and if they need the new currencies they must come to have the dealing with the proper money market next curbing fake notes so already so many of the fraudulent activities people may made more fake notes so if you are introducing the new currencies notes the fake notes also will be stopped to circulate okay students the sixth chapter has been over next the chapter 7 the chapter 7 is international economics the subject international economics evolved from a simple theory of international trade it was formulated to answer a few basic questions the subject first originated in western europe an account of increasing importance of foreign trade in the part of the world 
so after finding out the importance of the foreign trade only the international economy the subject of also improved so the contributions of classical economists like adam smith david ricardo dasik and g s mill shaped the subject matter of international economics so the international economics studies the entire range of international economic transaction that consists of not only trade in goods and services but also capital flows how the capital will be moving from one nation to another one of the nations and the technology transfers some of the technologies will be moved from one nation to another one of the nations and the rate of exchange when we are involving in this international trade the rate of exchange will be followed and the rate of exchange also will be changed from one nation to another one of the nations when we are changing the exchange the balance of payment will be there and issue relating to the tariffs protection free trade investment flows rule of fiscal and monetary policies pursued by the individual countries so the meaning of international trade if you are understanding the meaning of international economics so the international economics is the branch of economics which is concerned with the exchange of goods and services between two or more countries so normally we have studied in our internal trade how the market is produced how the commodity has been going to produced and how it will be selling in the market but if the goods are going to exchange between the two or more countries that is called international economics hence the subject matter is mainly related to the foreign trade so those who all going to involved in this foreign trade and whichever institutions are there will be dealt by the international economics so in other words international economics is a specialized field of economics which deals with the economic interdependence among countries and studies the effect of such interdependence and the factors that affect it so what are the factors will be going to affect the international economics and some of the economic interdependence among the countries now all the nations are involving in this international trade because no nations will have self reliance to producing any of the commodities some of the nations will have more natural resources which has able to produce the industrial sectors or the oil field some of the agricultural nations will have the natural resources which has able to producing the agricultural sectors such as yeah, crops so every nations must be have the relationship with the other nations so how one nation is going to make the relationship with the other nations how the goods and the peoples and the factors of production is going to transfer from one place to another place is exposed and explained by the international economics next subject matter of international economics the subject matter of international economics include large number of segments which are classified into the some of the parts following parts so first one is pure theory of trade in this international economics the pure theory of trade is also will be there this comprehends explains the causes for foreign trade why the foreign trade was arised and in some of the compositions what are the compositions are there in this international trade the direction and volume of trade next determinations of the terms of trade what are the factors will be determine the terms of trade so and exchange rate and issues related to balance of trade and balance of payment so the balance of trade mean so the trade the goods and services the exchange the goods and services have to be equal and because of that if you are paying in the form of currencies that also have to be equal balance that is called the balance of payments so in this pure theory of trade we will study this all things 
Next, policy issues. So under this part, policy issues such as free trade versus protections. Free trade mean if any of the nations will have the open gate to make the dealing with another nation that is called free trade. Next, method of regulating trade in whichever methods are there to regulate the foreign trade and capital and technology flows. How the capital and technology is going to change from one nation to another of the nations and use of taxation. How the international trade, all the nations are going to impose the tax for the international traders. Next, subsidies and dumping, exchange control and convertibility, foreign aids external foreign borrowings and foreign direct investments foreign direct investment mean already we have studied so the foreigners also will be able to make the investment in the another nations so measures of correcting disequilibrium in the balance of payment etc are covered so the policy issues always will be covered such as these things next international cartels and blocks so this part deals with the economic integrations in the form of international cartels, customs union, monetary unions, state blacks, economic unions and some also. Next, international financial and regulatory institutions. So the financial institutions like the International Monetary Fund, IBRD, World Trade Organization, etc. which influence the international economic transactions and relations shall also be the part of international economies. So if you want to continue to maintain the relationship among the countries, so all the nations must be has the financial aid. So what are the financial aids are there to maintain the international trade is explained by the international financial and regulatory institutions. So the four subject matter is there in this international economics the pure theory of trade policy issues international cartels and blocks and international financial and regulatory institutions we will study very elaborately in later next trade so what's the meaning of trade so normally we have studied we have, we know already that term trade means exchange of goods wares and merchandise among the peoples so normally if the goods and services is going to exchange between the people or buyer and seller it is called trade so the trade is of two types so we can classify the trade as a two types first one is internal trade and the international trade so internal trade so internal trade refers to the exchange of goods and services within the political and geographical boundaries of one nation is called internal trade. So within the political and geometrical boundaries, if you are producing or if the produced commodity is going to the market for selling purpose, it is called internal trade. So what are the products is produced within the boundaries of one nation? So the product is consumed by the same people of the nation is called internal trade. So this is also known as domestic trade or home trade or intra-regional trade. Next international trade. So I think you may know about the international trade. So international trade refers to the trade or exchange of goods and services between two or more countries. If the goods and services or exchange of goods and services between two or more countries that is called international trade. Some of the product is produced from one country and it was consumed by the another countries. It was sold in sold in the another countries is called international trade. Next some of the difference between internal trade and international trade. So if you are considering the internal trade, so the internal trade takes place between different individuals and firms within the same nations. 
So all the individual peoples and the farms within the same nations will be occurs. So the international trade take place between different individuals and farms in different countries. So many of the multinational companies and if the producers may be in one countries and the sellers and the consumers also will be in another one countries. And if you are considering the international trade, the labor and the capital move freely from one region to another. So within, along with the, so within the boundaries of one nation, so the labor and the capital can easily move from one region to another of the nations. But here, the labor and the capital do not move easily from one nation to another of the nations. So far, there are so many of the rules and regulations are there. So on the basis of the rules and regulations only, so the labor and the capital can move. Next, in this international internal trade, there will be free flow of goods and services since there are no restrictions. So in this internal trade, there is no restrictions because under the only one government, the state or central government only, so the productions and the uh, distributions and the consumers will be happens. So there will be free flow of goods and services. But here, the goods and services do not easily move from one country to another since there are number of restrictions like tariff and quota. So many of the nations also will have maintained or will be drawn in the international trade. So on the basis of drawn tariff and quota only, the goods and services will be moved from one country to another of the countries. Some of the nations may have imposed more tariffs. Some of the nations will be free into the international trade. So in this international internal trade, there is only common currency. So uh, according to the India, the rupees only is going to use for exchange the commodity. But here there are different currencies because many countries will come to the international trade. So all the nations must be have some amount of the foreign currencies. So there is different currencies. Next to the physical and geographical conditions of a country are more or less similar. But here there are difference in physical and geographical conditions of two countries. So when the two countries are two more countries are there. So the difference in physical and geographical conditions. So some of the labor natural resources also will be changed but here not like that so in this internal trade the trade and financial regulations are more or less the same so the financial and the trade regulations always may be sometime more or sometime less so the trade and financial regulations such as interest rate trade laws differ between countries because every country is as some of the interest trade and their borrowed monies and some of the laws also will be very free in one countries and some of the nations will using the more restricted trade laws so the trade laws always will be differ between the countries here there is no difference in political affiliations customs and habits of the people and government policies because if the government impose any of the policies these policies only will be equal to all the peoples and the customs and the politicians also but here not like that the differences are pronounced in political affiliations habits and customs of the people and government policies if any of the government policies sometimes will be affect the other policies of another nations so this is the seven difference are there okay students if you have any doubt please ask me thank you